to take a look at these photographs and see if you can find a connection between them. So what do they have in common? It may not be clear, but it's communication. The definition of communication is the imparting or exchanging of information or news. And that's exactly what's going on here in these pictures. It might be something small like raising your hand to get a taxi. It could be something major like a social critique of the modern age in a painting. But regardless, it's communication, and it's important. After all, life without even the most basic communication would be very different, to say the least. We communicate every moment of our lives. From the second we're born and we cry, we're communicating. And it doesn't even have to be verbal. You can only have to look at these photographs to see that none of those communications involve speaking. And it doesn't even have to be intentional. Our body language speaks volumes. So much so that a study that shows that you can recognize the emotion happiness in 23 milliseconds. That's a whole lot faster than saying the words, I'm happy. And with that, I believe communication is the basic human need. Sure, we need water, uh, food, and shelter to survive, but every animal needs that. Communication is something that gives us not the ability to survive, but to live. It allows us to convey feelings, uh, share ideas, have fun, all of which makes up the human condition and gives us freedom. Now, I could have opened with a different example. I could have shown you these pictures and asked you, what if you couldn't tell someone you needed to go to the bathroom? Or maybe that you were hungry, or you couldn't let someone know you were tired or even just feeling sick. Well, you probably wouldn't, you might not consider these things because you can, they're basically you can be taken for granted. You could get up right now and go to the bathroom if you needed to. But whenever communication is difficult and a challenge in itself, these actions become very hard to do. And there's a lot of things out there that can limit communication. Brain injury, strokes, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, speech impediments, and to name one more, cerebral palsy. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm standing up here. You're thinking, this person can communicate perfectly, or so I hope. Well, I'm not here to tell my story, but rather the story of my aunt, Fiona, and an adventure of mine, Quickcom. So, Fiona was born on the 9th of February, 1973. Due to unfortunate circumstances of birth, mainly having lack of oxygen, she developed cerebral palsy, which is essentially brain damage to the part of the brain that controls motor functions. As a result of this, she's been in a wheelchair, she can't speak, and has very, very limited motor movement. And she's not alone. There is believed to be around 17 million people worldwide with cerebral palsy. However, may, not all of them are severe. It can be something small, like maybe having a limp, or it can be even worse than Fiona's. To give an example, one in two is in chronic pain, one in two is an intellectual impairment, one in four is epilepsy, and one in five is tube-fed, among many other things. And it can be any combination of these. However, despite this, Fiona has led a normal life as, as possible, as you can see in those photographs. She's got up to some pretty crazy antics. I've heard stories of her going along storm walls on a pier in the middle of a storm, to helping her friends cheat in class tests, to even being knocked out by her brothers when they built souped-up tricycles for her and raced her around the yard. And why has she had this opportunity to have as normal life as possible? One simple thing. She can raise her eyebrows. Yes, just her eyebrows. So, my granny discovered this at a very, well, Fiona's very young age and devised a system for her based on just having the sections of the alphabet and asking verbal cues to which Fiona would raise her eyebrows and she could spell words and sentences. It isn't ideal, but it gives Fiona a lot of freedom in communication. Fortunately, a lot of disabled people have this luxury in that there's a rudimentary system in place for them to be able to spell or communicate in some way. But again, it's not perfect. They don't have complete freedom of communication. They rely on someone else to be there, someone else to pay attention to them, especially in case there could be dire consequences if they don't. So where do I fit into this? Well, I grew up um, visiting Fiona an awful lot of time at my grandparents' house um, from even a young age. At the start, I didn't realize anything was different about Fiona. I took her to be as she was. There are stories of me as a kid running around the kitchen, and Fiona has, with, as a result of cer cerebral palsy, has, can have random muscle movements, so like her arms can jut out. So one time that happened as I was running past her, and I just ducked under her and went, nah, 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 you missed me. 
thinking it was just an accident on purpose, the way some parent or uh, aunt or uncle might try and grab a kid as they're running as a joke or something. But as I grew up, I did come to realize that I had a severe disability. But this didn't change our relationship. For example, around eight or nine years old, I learned to spell with her and talk with her. But Fiona being Fiona, and I think in a bit of revenge for my antics earlier, she would purposely spell words wrong for me to make me look bad, and especially when my sisters were around. But over time, we grew pretty close together, and I came to appreciate her. As I said, it's good, but it's not perfect. She doesn't have complete freedom. She relies on someone else. She's inspired me, so I want to return a favor to her. So I built an invention, QuickCom. I can't show a picture because I'm in the process of applying for a patent, but to give you an idea, if you can imagine maybe a screen about 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters on the side of a wheelchair, and a sensor. So in the case of my aunt, she wears that on her forehead in a headband. And again, just by raising her eyebrows, she communicates. So, there's a few things prompt me to build this. First of all, reading books. Fiona loves to read. However, that's pretty difficult for her, especially because she can't turn the pages. She relies on someone else to do that for her. When I was younger, I used to volunteer this up when I stayed there after school. However, I was pretty guilty of getting distracted in my own book and forgetting to turn the pages for her, leaving her five or six minutes having nothing to do, which is kind of unfair. So that was the first thing, building advice that would let her read books, just with her eyebrows. From there, I added a communication platform. So originally just phrases, but then adding, uh, being able to spell just like she used to do with my granny. At the moment, it's not perfect in that my granny can still communicate a lot faster than the system. Like, my granny's predictive text that could put a phone to shame. But over time, I hope it'll be more use, with new carers coming in to look after Fiona, and she's a few nieces and nephews who are quite young that are growing up. And I want to give them the opportunity to communicate with this amazing person without having to wait until they are old enough to know how to be able to spell and use the spelling system my aunt had. And the final step was adding a sort of environmental control. So, my aunt Fiona loves to watch TV, especially soap operas, but my granda loves to watch golf. Now, I'm sure we've all had that problem where we are watching TV and maybe put the remote out of our hand. And maybe one of our siblings or parents will come in and change the channel for us. But at least we can get up and snatch the remote back. Fiona can't exactly do that, so I wanted to give her a fighting chance, so now she can control the TV with just her eyebrows. And this gives Fiona a lot of freedom, but I also found it gives my granny freedom. So, my granny has been looking after Fiona since she was born, which is a hands-on job. But she also raised five other children, all of which were boys, and had a career as a primary school teacher. Even now, at 79 years old, she's still, one of the, she's still at the forefront of looking after Fiona, which is limiting for both of them, because Fiona has to get granny's attention to maybe spell, and Fio granny has to constantly be sort of just thinking about Fiona. So it gives her freedom, too. Now, quick comes not perfect but it's not bad for something I've built in my garage. As I said before, I'm applying for a patent, and I've built a few prototypes. But it was a learning experience, not from the point of view of technology or computer science. I had a lot of those skills already, but from the point of view of communication. So there's one thing I'll never forget when I was building QuickCom. It was one of the first times I was testing it with Fiona, and I got her to spell something. Now, I thought she'd spell something like, hello, my name is Fiona. Instead, she turned out a series of curse words. I did not say th see that coming. But in hindsight, it kind of made sense. Because as a child, we're told cursing is forbidden, and even as adults, society doesn't really like it, which is fair enough. But in moments of passion or anger, maybe we'd throw one out there. Fiona never really had that option, because in order to do that, she'd have to spell that for someone else and have it in their voice, especially my granny. I don't think any of us would say a curse word in front of our parents. So I realized that Fiona had more sides for her than even I give her credit for. There was more of a personality hidden behind not communicating. So I wanted to build it for more people. So I want to mass produce it. However, it's not as simple as a one-size-fits-all kind of system. It's not like designing a TV or a phone. The user is different. No two disabilities are the same, and no two instances of disability are the same either. Each person is unique. This can pose problems, but QuickCom is kind of designed for that in the fundamentals behind it. So if a person wants a simple option, like having a few phrases that they can use, or perhaps another person who maybe has a few movements, can maybe bend their fingers or move their knee or something, and wants a whole suite of options, they can have it with QuickCom with the fundamentals. Regardless of what communication system is being used, be it QuickCom or just something rudimentary like my, what my granny and Fiona used to use, the motivation is still the same. 
the need for social contact. We get to show our personalities through what we say and do. We show compassion through compliments. We show intelligence through asking questions. We show humor through telling jokes. And in talking to people, we see who they are. Now, how can you get to know someone if you can't talk to them, if they can't communicate? The short answer is, you can't really. It's quite unfair, because my weaknesses or our weaknesses don't define our personalities. So why should we let disability define someone else's? It's not fair. Everyone deserves the right to communicate. Quick was my bold move. What's yours? Thank you.